Climate change is a pressing global issue characterized by rising temperatures, erratic weather patterns and environmental degradation. Despite its far-reaching consequences, each of us play a role in its exacerbation through our daily actions. Whether it's excessive consumption, reliance on fossil fuels or unsustainable practices, our individual choices collectively contribute to the crisis at hand. However, recognizing our responsibility is the first step towards creating a meaningful change. By adopting sustainable habits and advocating for systemic shifts, we can work towards a more resilient and harmonious future for generations to come. Let me introduce to you all Sri Kumaraguru Manika Vasagam, farmpreneur and founder of the Sigma Estates, Kothagiri. Sir is an alumni of Bits Pilani and IIM Kolikod. After eight years of service as an IT consultant, Mr. Kumaraguru Manika Vasagam is now an organic farmer and has been into farming for the last seven years. From farm tourism to farm-based gastronomy, he strives to bring experiential living to the millennials in an affordable and rewarding way. That was very interesting to know about you, sir. Thanks. Welcome to the Expert Talk series at the NGP School. This is Shrutika of Grade 9, here to take you through the interaction. Sir, may I proceed Thank with the questions? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shrutika, for the introduction. Thank you, sir. I mean, I'm pleased to be here. Yes, okay, so, so let me start with this. Most of our grandparents were farmers. Yeah. Very rarely we find people of the generation X as farmers. How about you, sir? As I introduced you, you are from the techie lot. Yeah. How did you become a farmpreneur? What inspired you to embark on this journey? Yeah, so uh, it's pretty much the first question that I get whenever I meet people. Uh, so. The thing is, uh, farming has been with us, as you said, for generations, right? My great-grandfathers were farmers, my uh, grandfather was a farmer. It's only from the, the generation after that, people changed their profession to doctors and uh, engineers and stuff. So, I always had this liking towards farming. But it was more of a coincidence for me rather than uh, me choosing this career path. So, till about 2016, I was in the IT sector. I was in consulting. and. Uh, at that point of time, I thought, you know, I should do something on my own and I wanted to start up. So I was thinking of multiple ideas, you know, from uh, education space to uh, something in the tech space, creating some softwares, all these were running in my mind. And one of the things that struck me at that point of time was agriculture. Okay. Uh, it was a coincidence. I mean, I never really thought of that as a career progression, but it was a coincidence at that point of time. So we were also looking for some farmlands at that point of time to invest. So, when both of these aligned together, that's when my journey into agriculture started. So, I uh, bought this land in Kothagiri, fell in love with the place. It was so beautiful, the climate was very nice. So, then I decided, okay, this is going to be my career path from here on. Develop this land, uh, create something uh, which not many of my friends would have done from the techie space. And uh, have something unique that I, I am happy about and this is what I really craved for and that's why my progression into uh, agriculture started there. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing your inspiration journey. Yeah. It's truly fascinating to see how you transitioned from the tech background to becoming a farmpreneur. Now let's shift our gear slightly. I love to hear about how you're addressing climate change. So as a farmpreneur and climate action hero, could you share with us how you've integrated sustainable practices into your operations and how do you believe it contributes to combating climate change? Okay. So the first and foremost step that I took when I started farming was to choose that I I'm going to go the organic way. Okay. So, organic farming helps in climate change in a big way. It might not be visible from the outside that you see that a lot of farmers are there. They do agriculture. It's so green. It looks so nice. But when they are not doing it organically, it adds to a lot of uh, greenhouse gases. It comes through the synthetic fertilizers that they use. It comes from the pesticides that they use. And it comes from the weedicides that they use. A lot of these consume a lot of energy for production and when that is used in agriculture for producing our crops 
it adds harmful substances as well as it contributes a lot to the greenhouse gases. So when I decided to take up organic farming, I know that I knew that actually you know I'm somehow trying to reverse this climate change in at least in a small way. So that is one step. So choosing organic farming was the first one. The second, when I started farming, my land was pretty much, uh, uh, I mean, it was barren to say. It only had bushes and stuff which were not really required. But it also had these native trees which were, you know, uh, the Nilgiris, part of the Nilgiris biosphere. And a lot of these uh, trees were home to a lot of these birds which we see in the Nilgiris uh, district, right? So when we, um, uh, when I started farming and started to clear up all these bushes, I left out each of these trees there, mm -hmm. mainly because I want to invite all the birds to my farm, you know, have all them come in. So there is a bit of diversity there in the farm. You have a lot of these birds and we also have uh, this thing that, you know, I have a lot of guava trees in my farm. We harvest only what's left of, I mean, after the birds eat and that's what we sell also in our platform. So. This is something that I did to, you know, to increase the biodiversity in my area. So these are the two main things that I've actually taken up for climate change. Yes, sir. thank you so much. Your commitment to climate change is truly commendable. And speaking of climate change, I read that recently the Supreme Court of India for the first time recognized the right against the adverse impacts of climate change, saying it is intervened with the right to life and equality that are embedded in our Indian constitution. The bench reversed a 2021 order and introduced a blanket ban against the overhead power lines over an area of 99,000 square kilometers, covering parts of Gujarat and Rajasthan to protect the birds. The court only allowed underground power transmission cables due to its incredible potential for the country's clean energy shift that is very necessary for us to attain our climate change goals. Reflecting on the recent Supreme Court's decision, it's very clear that each of us also has equal responsibility towards protecting our planet. Given this, I'm curious to hear about any innovative techniques that you've implemented in your farm for the protection of birds, animals and such vulnerable species. Yeah, so I, I think we covered the birds part of it where we had a lot of these trees. Uh, so um, in trees itself, not just the uh, Nilgiri uh, native trees. We planted a lot of these uh, fruiting trees which attract a lot of birds. Like for example, the milk fruit, there is this pulsan, there is this longan berry. Uh, you have so many berries. We, we planted so many berries which attract a lot of birds. And it just, just does not attract a single species of birds. Mm -hmm. When you come to our farm, you will basically see a variety of birds that are coming in. The early mornings will be so chirpy, you know, because there are so many birds around us. So, growing a lot of trees is the first thing that we did. The second thing, when we are not using any of these pesticides or any synthetic uh, fertilizers in our farm, the uh, animals, you know, the smaller ones like, you know, the rabbits, the hares and stuff, which are in adjacent fields, they come to a feast in our, uh, our farm. That's what happens actually. So, uh, when we have our carrot fields and beetroot fields and stuff, it, early mornings, if you will find all these, you know, hares and this thing coming and eating off a little bit of carrots or something like that, they actually have a feast there because the nearby uh, fields that are growing all these carrots and beetroots are full of chemicals mm -hmm. and the birds and these small animals that are there, they identify that. Okay, they know it, you know, uh, clearly that, you know, that that has synthetic fertilizers there and the number of animals that we have in our farm is pretty high. I mean, like I just have one uh, dog in my place. Okay, that I, which I consider as the only animal in my farm. But there are thousands of them inside the farm, which I don't know. All these hares and small, small animals that are there. So, they all come in during the night and early mornings. You can see a lot of them there. So, we, this is what I've been doing there. It's great to hear how you're looking out for the wildlife in your farm, sir. And speaking of your farm, Personally, I was intrigued by your promotion of farm tourism. If my family decides to visit Kothagiri, uh, shall we visit your farm? If my school wishes to visit, is it possible any particular procedures? Yeah, I mean, all are welcome. So, uh, we have a website called sigmafarmersmarket.com. So, uh, unlike the regular uh, e-commerce websites, in the website, what we are talking about is what we do at the farm. Mm -hmm. And we welcome guests to our farm. 
so we welcome all students we welcome all you know uh, people from different ways of life different careers they can all visit uh, we take orders in our retail platform uh, for our d2c customers so whatever produce that we are uh, producing in our farm we sell it to our customers we get a lot of inquiries from our customers asking you know can we come visit the farm and see how we are producing our food you know they want to see how the carrots grow they want to see how the beetroots grow they want to be a part of that so we welcome all people they can come visit our farm at any point of time uh, we have a booking uh, reservation form in the website itself people can just let us know a day or couple of days in advance and they can visit the farm at any point of time so and definitely you're welcome there yes sir yeah. great thanks for the details yeah. sir it really sounds like a wonderful experience for the visitors and farm based gastronomy we picked this from your profile yeah. can you throw some light on yeah. this yeah do you know what is gastronomy not very sure so uh, let me explain gastronomy is very simple you choose the best of ingredients and you cook it in the best possible way and then you have the really best of food there okay so in our farm what happens is we grow lettuces mm -hmm. we grow kale we grow carrots beets broccoli lot of these delicious english vegetables and stuff which grow in those areas and uh, uh, the guests who come mm -hmm. they order the food right in 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 a, any restaurant they'll just order the food and they'll get what they get but here we have a different concept where the guests can actually choose what all produces that they can actually want right so they choose the best of produce and then we tell them which is the best way to cook it also so we'll tell them okay these are the dishes that are best possible there so then once that is done the best part is having food right enjoying the meal so that's the gastronomy so the farm based gastronomy is that's what i meant there in the website thank you right. sir so it sounds like a fantastic way to like immerse the visitors in the farm experience yeah. and now for the viewers who are interested in adopting sustainable habits in their own lives or perhaps start their own sustainable farm what advice would you offer them based on your experiences yeah so uh, one advice that i would give to anybody in uh, in, in general is that uh, anybody can start an organic farm it could start from as small as a kitchen garden that they have in their houses right start something small uh, start something organic start growing your own vegetables you know um, even though i have an organic farm i need to transport the vehicles from my farm to your homes right so a lot of emissions happen on the way during transports and stuff we are trying to reduce it in a lot of ways but if we can grow our own food in each of their terraces in each of their homes that will be the best way to combat climate change right so this is what i would suggest start a small kitchen garden which is organic in your own homes and start small i mean kids like you can definitely take that up in your home as a small project or something start up with a few easy crops like in you know, a tomatoes or chilies which grow really well here and then start producing your own food at your home and that's the best way to combat climate change Sure, right. sir. We'll try to do that. And any other thoughts that you want to share with the students of this generation? Yeah, the students especially have to take this up as a project. Try to uh, combat climate change in the ways that you know. And uh, we have other programs like you know Water Warriors in our uh, Young Indians, uh, which I'm part of. So we talk to a lot of students regarding you know how to conserve water, right? How do you how do you basically uh, reduce your consumption of water on a daily basis? keep that keep those things in mind i think you know it better you know how to conserve your water reduce your usage of taps and stuff so all these things even though you're doing it in a small level you think that you know you're you're a small girl you might not be doing much of an impact but think of the number of small girls that we have around right each of them makes a small difference i think that will make a huge impact so students take this up as a as an opportunity to do that visit a lot of farms we are, we welcome you come to a lot of farms visit them understand what is actually going on behind you know the food that you consume and then take that up and uh, one other thing that i would suggest is in my presentation i think i'll have it today so uh, everybody considers being a doctor being a lawyer being a policeman or you know a lot of these professions nobody considers being a farmer as a profession that's another thing that you sh you kids should try it out so keep that as an option and uh, think if it will be a good suit for your future and that's the other thing thank you thank you for sharing your wisdom with the young generation and thank you for your time and for having come all the way from kothagiri to coimbatore we shall soon visit your farm sir thank, thank you. you so much and shrutika i mean the questions were wonderfully put and i think you have done a really good job thank, thank you, you. Sir. thank you sir. it was nice thank you